All right, I have been waiting to make this video for a long time. Your third eye or your pineal gland can be very easily unblocked and cleared and opened. And this is not some esoterical nonsense. It's actually pretty simple. And the problem is, which I'm gonna explain in this video if you watch the whole thing, it's not this weird spiritual concept, opening the third eye, for those who don't know, like the third eye chakra is the gateway to the divine. It allows you to do all kinds of crazy things, astral projection, and super advanced lucid dreaming, you know, accessing your gifts, connecting to your higher self. It's really powerful. You may have seen some of this stuff in, or, you know, in the movie Doctor Strange was inspired by a lot of this stuff. And what a lot of people think is the problem is that they have to go down this spiritual journey, meditate for two hours a day, and, you know, really dive deep into the world. And it's like this really difficult, mysterious thing. That's not the truth. The truth is everybody's third eye would and could naturally open and become unblocked. It's really just a case of stopping doing the things that are keeping it blocked. Let me explain that again. You're doing things in your daily life that keep your third eye closed, okay? And you're probably not aware of these things because you've never been told that they're bad for you. But by doing these things and by uh, being having these things done to you, I should say, really, because a lot of these things it's like the default state where we're not really given a choice. We're not really told that it's doing this, but it is. And when you stop doing these things, your third eye naturally opens on its own. There's nothing to do as such. It just is there. It just opens and becomes accessible to you. So I'm not sure what I'm going to title this video, but it's something like how to open your third eye, or I don't know. But basically what you need to do, it's very simple. You just need to stop doing the things that are keeping it closed. So what does that mean? Ingesting fluoride. I'm gonna just go through them one by one, okay? Ingesting fluoride. Fluoride is a poison. If you look at the, on your toothpaste tube, it says contains fluoride, or if, you know, if you have toothpaste that contains fluoride. Contains fluoride, if you swallow more than a pea-sized amount, call poison control. Literally, like if you look at the tube, it, it says that. Now, they have to legally put that because it's a poison. It is a neurotoxin. It's it damages your brain uh, in a way that's, in many cases, irreparable if you ingest enough of it. Uh, so the first step is to stop using toothpaste with fluoride, switch to non-fluoride ones, and within about a month, you will feel very different. And it's one of those things that you don't really notice, you don't really know how much it's affecting you until you stop doing it. So give that one a try. The second thing is that fluoride is also in the water. Depending on where you live, well, some countries are worse than others, okay? Fluoride is in the water. And unless you filter it out, you're ingesting with every glass of water the same amount that the toothpaste tube would tell you to call poison control for. But somehow when it's in the water, they don't care about it. Or it's, they, you don't have to call poison control or something. But it's the same principle. The fluoride is a neurotoxin. Stop ingesting the neurotoxin and your brain will function better. I mean, it kind of sounds like a no-brainer, right? It sounds like a very simple explanation. You stop ingesting the poison, you start feeling better. Really simple stuff. So you can get fluoride filters uh, online on Amazon. There's all kinds of different ways to filter it out. I'm sure you'll figure it out. Okay, so the next thing is endocrine disruptors. Hormone damaging or substances and chemicals that damage the balance of hormones in your body. I could make a whole video talking about endocrine disruptors. Basically, if it's not natural, if it's very chemically, you know, synthesized and created, it's probably bad for you. And I'm sure you know this you know, basically, if you can't eat it, it's probably not good to put on your skin. If you can't ingest it, as in swallow it and, you know, digest it, you probably shouldn't be having it. Let's say if things like, and there's all, there's all kinds of things, I could go into another whole rabbit hole on this. Things like most shower gels, things like sun cream, there's all kinds of things that are, you can get natural versions of them, but those natural versions of them don't contain the dangerous chemicals that will damage your, and keep your third eye closed. So look at endocrine disruptors, you know, I, I want to try and keep this concise. Maybe I'll make another video about that. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do that. And lastly, I would like to explain the worst one of all. Okay, worse than fluoride, worse than endocrine disruptors, worse than chemicals. And that is alcohol. Alcohol lowers your vibration. Alcohol lowers your frequency. It's bad for you. It makes you feel worse. It is literally a poison. Literally, like it, the definition of it is a poison. The only reason that it's allowed to be sold is because it helps lower the population's frequency. And if you drink it in low enough amounts, it doesn't kill you, right? Now I know we're gonna get people saying, well, technically everything's a poison in large enough quantities. Yes, but alcohol is also by definition a poison. It's the same as fluoride. It's not like apples where, 
yeah, technically, if you ate enough apples, you would probably not feel great. Apples are not poison. Alcohol is a poison. Uh, specifically, it, it helps to calcify your pineal gland and form phosphate crystals on the inside of it, which actually stops it working how it should. This is a big one because it's tied to... I don't know how to keep this a short video. <laughs> Maybe you guys don't mind. It's, it's tied to how the circadian rhythm and your melatonin production works. So the pineal gland helps to secrete melatonin. Melatonin is known as the hormone of darkness, which is what happens when the sun goes down, your body, when it gets dark, your body starts producing melatonin using the pineal gland to help to like circulate it basically through your body. When you stay up past when the sun goes down, when you stay up late, when you overstimulate yourself with blue lights, and this is the reason you often see me wearing these orange glasses, is because they filter out the blue light. So if I have to stay up in the, you know, late at night, they filter out the blue light so my body can still produce melatonin. It's super important. So what happens is the sun goes down, your body starts producing melatonin. If you interrupt that process by drinking alcohol and staying out, or you know, staying active, um, moving around, listening to music, going clubbing, let's say is the wor is absolute worst thing you can do for your third eye and overall health and sleep is to go out clubbing at night and then drinking alcohol. If you do that stuff, you stop your body producing melatonin, which, and you, in other ways, you also shut down your pineal gland. It's really, really bad. But the interesting thing is, and the, re uh, the reason this video is so simple and yet so complex, complex is because naturally, if you, if you look at, let's say, a tribe living in the savannah or, you know, in the jungle, let's say, they're not drinking alcohol or at least very rarely. They are not going clubbing. They're not keeping themselves up with artificial lights. They're not, you know, swallowing poison or brushing their teeth with teeth with fluoride. They're not smothering their bodies in chemical shower gels and sun creams. They're just living in harmony with nature, and they're some of the happiest people in the world. And they also, interestingly, are some of the most connected in terms of the astral realm and the lucid dreaming stuff. There's lots and lots of things to be said about this, right? The dream shamans, they're connected with this stuff at a very deep level. And it's because when you stop doing these bad things and you just live in harmony with nature, your third eye naturally opens. These are natural gifts that we all have. So in the modern world, the average person watching this, it's not some difficult journey that you need to go down to, you know, practice for years and like maybe one day you can open your third eye and lucid dream and all this stuff. No, it's very simple. All you need to do is stop doing the things that are, stop, that are bad for you. Stop swallowing poison, swap, stop keeping yourself up, you know, past when the sun goes down and go to sleep like almost every other mammal does, unless they're nocturnal. We are not nocturnal, by the way. And just start being more in harmony with what nature is and your natural gifts will open up, your third eye will open and your pineal gland. So it's actually very simple. I, hopefully I can keep this under 10 minutes. But yeah, let me know in the comments which of those things you're doing and like, how do you feel? Like, do you feel connected to nature and, and reality? Do you feel good? Or maybe it's time for a change? I don't know. Let me know.